Archbishop Fulton Sheen has a great book called Remade for Happiness. And one of his chapters about kind of like our human condition, he says, if we were to see a bunch of men running, trampling through a field with pickaxes and pans around their neck, we would think that they haven't found enough gold and they're still looking for gold. Or when you see a bunch of doctors and nurses running around with stretchers and med bags and ambulances, you think, well, they haven't found um, the remedy for our ills. They're still looking for an answer to the health problem. And he said the same reaction has to kind of stir up us when we see a bunch of people flocking and filling the nightclubs and bars and stadiums. And we have to have that little intuition that they haven't found what they're looking for, which is happiness. Because if they were to have found it, they would stop searching for it in all these different places. And we ourselves have, have experimented that the, the anticipation is always greater than the realization. When we anticipate a certain happiness or something that's going to make us happy, and when we're there and we have it, it's not as good as we built it up to be. Usually when we were younger, it was Christmas. After you've opened up your presents and you've, you've had the sweets and you've had everything, it's kind of like you always had that little feeling in you, the deep down inside, like the heart of hearts, that it wasn't a... It wasn't everything that you had anticipated, what you had realized, like what you had. What you had. Um, in our experience, I've kind of come to the conclusion in the schools that uh, between y'all and Blarney, they're probably the most boring places in the country, asking the kids questions if they're, if they're bored where they are. And unanimously, in both of those places, they say that it is the most boring place whether it be Yall or Blarney. And I tell them that where I was in New Hampshire was probably more boring. And that I think I've figured out in my journeys, I found out the most boring place in the whole entire world. I know where the most boring place in the entire world is. And I'm convinced of it. It's, um, it's the human heart that's expelled God. The, the heart that doesn't have God is the most boring place in the entire world. It's the... Prophet Jeremiah, what he says today, he says, Woe, cursed is the man, woe to you, and cursed are you, who have placed your trust in human beings and you seeking your strength in flesh, whose heart has turned away from God. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. He's like a dry bush in a barren wasteland that experiences no change. They say that, this is in the same book, it's um, Walker, Percy, I think, in his, his discoveries, he's found out that there is no, he's a literary uh, genius, and he's found out that they don't have an etymology for the word boredom. We don't know where it comes from, but we do know when it started appearing, and it was the same time where atheism was appearing on the scene. 18th century. You see, there's a connection because once we've expelled God and God's no longer exists, we get tired of absolutely everything. He says that it's not like people didn't get tired of things before. Like, your man who had to chop wood for 10 hours, he said, you know, he definitely got tired of chopping wood every single day for 10 hours straight to survive. But he said the difference was is he wasn't tired of everything. Boredom is when you become tired of everything. Everything. Nothing satiates that, that anticipation that you have, and nothing calms that thirst. You're trying to find rest and make gods in things that aren't going to satisfy you. And it gets very frustrating, and you can either, either fall into despair, you can become a cynic and just say that it's like whatever, like that's what there is, I'm cynical of everything, I'm just gonna enjoy quote unquote what I have here and just try to get the maximum out of it. Or you can turn to God. And that's what Jeremiah says in the, in the reading, first reading, blessed is the man whose heart is in the God because he's like a tree that is planted alongside the river where there's living water constantly and his roots are in, in, the, in the water. And it doesn't matter what happens. There could be a scorching heat. There could be a change of seasons, but the tree is going to stay the same because his roots are in the water. And it's like us. We can be anywhere in any circumstance and we're not going to be bored out of our mind and we're not going to be let down because in... In our heart of hearts, our hearts are planted and rooted in the living water of God. That he says, those who have my Holy Spirit, it's going to be like this 
this stream that bursts up from in, within them of living water, which is going to be constantly changing and constantly giving you life, and you're going to be bearing fruit in any time. And you're, you're, you're baptized. You're a baptized Christian. So anywhere you are, if you're in the state of grace, you can turn into your heart, and you can know that within you dwells the Almighty God, the Holy Trinity in your heart. So like, I don't care where you are. It doesn't matter where, what town you're living in or what village or what your circumstances are, how bad things are around you. It's, it's within. So boredom doesn't come from something that's outside of you externally. It comes from within, when you yourself are fed up with God himself. Or rather, excitement and adventure and divine intimacy comes from having God within you. We see that in Sister Clara as well. Our Sister Clara who was sitting down in, in her hotel bed in Manchester. She had her agent, her major film minor role but it was still a breakthrough and she's in Manchester and the limo was going to pick her up the next morning and she was just going over her schedule for the day and who she was going to have lunch with and what her next day was going to be like her dreams were absolutely fulfilled at 18 years old and she started crying because she felt this this emptiness and this void within her everything I've ever wanted I have it's in my hands but it's not it's not doing it, it wasn't filling that hole that she had it wasn't satiating that thirst that she had because our hearts were created for him and they will be restless until they rest in him. That St. Augustine experienced that God, you are not outside. You are not to be found in everything I was looking for you and all these external things. I found you in me, in that room, that secret room where we go in and we close the door and we're alone with him who we know loves us and wants us to delve deeper, deeper into these interior mansions as St. Teresa would say. So it's our responsibility. We need to tell these lads what boredom is. We need to tell these lads why they're bored and the reason for it, and that it's not that far from them. We're like the rich Epilon in the gospel today who experienced hell, who we ourselves have experienced hell on earth when you, when you try to make it a, a paradise and you just get let down by everything and you've experienced that dryness, that emptiness within you. We need to be warning them about that. Because that can be an eternity, that can be a reality that goes on forever. Where Abraham had to say, look, you had your goods in this life, you had your pleasure, and you never turned to the poor, you never turned to look for the needy, who Christ has said he's identified in, in those, those exact people. And you're getting your reward, Lazarus as well, who suffered, and now he's with me in the bosom of, of Abraham for all eternity. So we have to warn people, and we have to tell them, of these realities and where he's to be found because there's nothing like the soul in the state of grace when it's in communion with God. So we ask this through the intercession of our Blessed Mother on this day that we may find him and be with him in our heart in this life, look for him and be with him forever and eternity. Amen.